네, 번역 스킬 코스 엑셀 링스 100 Hub axle width 15mm Drive side to flange Non-drive side is 13 Non-drive side to flange I have to check brand diameter 59 Non-drive side flange diameter Here? 59 Drive side flange diameter ERD Tech City Rim Diameter Some rims may display ERD information. It may be difficult to obtain information from the manufacturer's website or point Active of purchase. Diameter, this method is used when there is no ERD rim information available. We will use gravity. We begin measuring the inner diameter of the rim from the valve hole. Insert the nipple onto the spoke in the direction of the head. Insert the nipple into the hole. Now mark the section where the nipple protrudes with a marker pen. Use vernier calipers. The measurement is 3.5 millimeters. Measuring the inner diameter of the rim becomes very easy. Erd equals 3.5 by 2 plus inner diameter of the rim. Add 7 millimeters. Select spoke lacing pattern. Number of spokes. Spoke installation. This wheel utilizes the cross pattern, which is the standard method of inserting spokes into the flange by alternating left and right. Okay, let's start to build ready. On the right side. Next, let's check the spoke installation sequence. First, install the spoke from flange side A out to in direction. Finish. Okay, you can see here bevel hole. Check. Put in spoke. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check. One, two, three. Second step, flange. B. Fit the spoke inwards from the outside. Pay attention to the position of the first spoke on the flange hole spoke. and rim hole. Spoke. 
Install by jumping one hole at a time. Install the spoke in the direction next to the initially installed spoke. Please refer to the diagram. Repeat installation using a pattern of jumping three holes. Third step, flange B, fit the spoke outward from the inside. Install the nipples on the spokes, tightening them slightly. Around 16 spokes should be good. Install all the remaining spokes in the holes. Take a good look. Make sure all the spokes are pointing downwards. Rotate the hub to cross the spokes without touching the air valve. Let me briefly show you the three cross pattern. Two of them just pass through here, non overlap. Change the position where only the last spoke passes through for overlap. When the bike wheel spokes cross, the last spoke that meets does not simply pass by, but needs to be overlapped and connected to make a sturdy wheel. Now, rotate the hub with the spokes installed in the opposite direction of the valve hole to create a cross pattern. Side it is complete. Finally, the fourth step is to install the spoke in flange A outward from the inside. Now, let's stand the wheel upright. Make sure all the spokes are pointing downwards. Assemble in the same cross pattern. Spokes racing pattern. Install one by one in the same pattern. Side B is complete. Wheel alignment. Through axle adapters are required for the latest standard hubs. Install the axle adapter. The latest standard hubs require a through axle adapter.
Using a spoke wrench, you should be able to determine the start and end of wheel rotation while tightening the nipples. Attach a sticker-like tag to the spoke next to the rim valve hole. To tighten the spoke nipple, turn it clockwise. Tighten all the nipples while leaving a 1mm spoke thread. Tighten the nipples evenly and increase the tension a little. That's why we attach tags to the spokes. Start the left-right alignment while tightening the nipples. Firstly, we will explain the principle behind adjusting the rim left and right. By tightening the right drive side spoke nipple, the rim will move to the right. Conversely, tightening the left non-drive side spoke nipple will move the rim to the left. It is important to note that over-tightening the left spoke nipple can cause the rim to move too far. Releasing the nipple will cause the rim to move in the opposite direction. In summary, the principle is that the tension power balance of the left and right spokes moves the rim and aligns it to the center. Aim for about 80% of the target tension. For 14 gauge spokes, the target tension is between 20 to 25. Currently, the tension measures around 14. Using a dishing tool during the process can save time. Adjust the initial left-right tolerance to be within 1 mm. Now, let's start the vertical alignment. Secondly, let's take a look at how to align the rim up and down. By tightening the peripheral nipples together, the rim will move towards the hub. To move the rim in small increments, tighten or loosen the nipples at least 360 degrees. Loosening the surrounding nipples together will cause the rim to move away from the hub. Vertical alignment of the rim only works when the left and right spoke tensions are adjusted together. Gradually align from the noisy parts. The touching parts have insufficient tension. The touching parts have insufficient tension. The surrounding spokes need to be tightened together. To perform vertical alignment, you need to tighten the nipples about one full turn, 360 degrees. It seems to be in contact here too. Take your time and make adjustments. Now, we will use a dishing tool to check the wheel center. When assembling wheels, the center can become slightly misaligned due to errors in the wheel truing stand. To correct this, a tool called a wheel alignment gauge, or centering gauge, is used. First, let's set up the dishing tool on the non-drive side. Attach the gauge securely without any gaps. Now, fix the gauge in place. Move the dishing tool to the opposite position.
the measurement shows a gap of about 4 millimeters. To calculate the rim displacement distance, 4 millimeters division by 2 equals 2 millimeters rim displacement distance. Now, we only need to move the rim by 2 millimeters. Adjust the position of the rim by tightening the left nipple once and loosening the opposite nipple once. This will allow the rim to move without changing the tension of the spokes. Before starting the job, label the spokes and check the starting and ending positions to ensure accuracy. Start the inspection again from the beginning. There should be no gap on the drive side, and if the measurement distances on both sides are equal, the rim is perfectly centered. When performing vertical alignment, aim for about 90% of the target spoke tension. Vertical alignment of the wheel is complete. Now, perform left-right alignment once again. Check by hand if the spoke tension is generally consistent. A tension meter is useful for finding spokes with too much or too little tension. The 14G spokes should measure around 20 to 25 kg force in tension. Perform left-right alignment again while aiming for 100% of the target tension. The wheel has been perfectly built within the acceptable range of error. <laughs> Install rim tape to protect the tube. Wheel build is complete. Success. Subscriptions, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated as they greatly support video production. Thank you for watching.